Boy. This video is about uh, bloodlines when it comes for Arabian horses. The bloodline of an Arabian horse. In the last video, I talked about the body conformation of the horse. In this video, I want to talk about the bloodline, the pure bloodline of the current Arabian horses we have right now. As I said before, uh, the original place for the Arabian horses in the past was the Arabian Peninsula. So any Arabian horse in any country in the world should go back to that place. If that horse doesn't go back uh, to the Arabian Peninsula and the bloodline, he's not a real pure Arabian. It's just that simple. But to make it very simple for you, think about it when it comes for people. Like the same thing that goes for horses goes for people or the opposite. What goes for the people goes for the horses. When you say an original African man or woman, an original European, an original Chinese, an original Arabian or whatever, it means a pure African, a pure European, a pure Chinese, a pure Arabian. Pure means someone who lives in a country and his ancestors or grandfathers and mothers and family and tribe lived in that same exact place for a long time. So his bloodline is pure. Just being pure doesn't make him good. So you could actually find a lot of Arabian horses that are very pure in the bloodline, but the body conformation is not that good. When it comes for racing or hunting in the past or uh, riding the horse in a battlefield in the past, not all pure Arabians were good. Sometimes you could find a non-pure horse, Arabian or non-Arabian, who's very good when it comes for the body conformation and a very pure Arabian when it comes for the bloodline that doesn't have a good body conformation it's rare but it happens so when you talk about the pure bloodline it's completely different than the body conformation or the body shape of the horse the bloodline is something what the horse does or what you expect from the horse flat racing, short jumping, and just riding right now or in the past uh, uh, hunting, racing and uh, going uh, to war or riding the horse in a battlefield riding horses at war it's completely different than uh, the bloodline now Arabians in the past cared about the bloodline and the body conformation more than anything else if you go back to, uh, in history in their books and their poems the only thing they always talk about and care about is the bloodline of the horse and uh, his body conformation of course the body conformation as I said before in the last video uh, in the past is completely different than what they want right now what they want right now is about the, uh, the appearance they want a beautiful horse in the past they cared about a strong uh, let's say a flexible horse that you can use in the battlefield but uh, the pure bloodline was very important for them in the past so both the mother and the father must be very pure otherwise they don't like the horse they don't call him an, uh, an Arabian or a pure Arabian horse now their opinion in the past was very clear if you keep the bloodline pure it's just a matter of time before you get what you want so if the mother and the father are both pure it's just a matter of time before you get a very good fall or filly that has a very good body confirmation for what you want battlefields racing or hunting so if you uh, keep uh, the pure bloodlines safe with time you will get the body confirmations that you want or the bodies of the horses that you want but if you care about the body confirmation without caring about the bloodline you could get what you want but how can you be sure or certain that this stallion or this mare will have a son or a daughter that looks like him or her? So getting one good horse doesn't give you 10 or 20 good fillies or foals from him. But if you are sure that his bloodline is good, even if he has one or two bad daughters or sons or foals, the rest will be very good if his bloodline is good so in the past they cared about the bloodline yes but because they compared the bloodline to the body confirmation of the horse they think they thought they said that the bloodline is that is what will give you the good body confirmation or the confirmation of the body that you want with time for what they wanted they think uh, battlefields and as i said before uh, hunting 
Right, now of course you have some important things like flat racing, uh, cross country, short jumping, endurance riding. All these things are uh, very, let's say, hard competitions that need a very good horse. But you have a lot of breeds right now. A lot of breeds have a very strong bloodline in them and sometimes it's an Arabian bloodline like Anglo-Arabian, uh, barb horses and turbots of course. So you have to, uh, let's say, uh, so many options. But in the past, the fastest horse in the entire world was the Arabian horse before, before they discovered or before they made the thoroughbred. Thoroughbred horses, when you go back in their bloodline, uh, came from three main fathers. The three main fathers for the English thoroughbred right now in the past are uh, two Arabian horses and one barb horse. Godolphin Arabian was a barb horse, not an Arabian horse. A barb stallion, but a barb horse means at least half Arabian because barb horses have a very strong Arabian bloodline in them. Darley Arabian is a pure desert bred Arabian and that's a fact, everyone knows it. Arabian Turk was, taking, uh, was taken from uh, the Turkish people. English people took it from the Turkish people in a battle and the Turkish people took it from the Arabians from the uh, desert. So he is an Arabian horse from the desert also. So three, three main horses created the current thoroughbred. One of them is uh, Godolphin Arabian, who is a barb horse or stallion, not an Arabian. Then you have Dali Arabian and Arabian Turk, and both of them are desert bred Arabians. The mothers of the thoroughbred in the past were called uh, blood horses or mares and warm blood mares from Europe. So the, mother, the mothers were from Europe and the fathers were Arabians and one of them was uh, a barb horse. So the thoroughbred cannot be called pure. That's why they don't say uh, call it pure bed. It's a thoroughbred. It's not pure. The mother side called sometimes war. The father side, it's uh, uh, an Arabian horse, Arabian horse and you have a barb horse. So when I say pure, that means a pure Arabian horse who's completely pure. A pure English horse who's completely English. A pure French horse who's completely French. A pure Italian guy who's com completely Italian. A pure Chinese guy who's completely Chinese and so on. So pure means a bloodline that doesn't have other bloodlines mixed with it. That's all. That, that means it's not always good, but it's not always bad. And usually, if it's a very pure bloodline, with time, you will get what you want, especially in the past. Now, for Arabians, when you say a pure bloodline, that means the closest the horse is to the desert bred Arabians, the more pure he is. Again, the closest the horse is to the desert bred Arabians, the more pure he is. Because the original place for Arabian horses is the Arabian Peninsula, the Gulf countries right now. So, right now you have desert bred Arabians, which means the Arabian horses in the Gulf countries. And you have pure Egyptians, Arabians, and you have uh, Polish Arabians, French Arabians, maybe Spanish Arabians. And of course, all of them will go back to the Arabian Peninsula. So the closer you are to the uh, desert bred Arabian, the more pure you are. The desert bred Arabian is completely pure. Egyptian Arabians, most of them go back in the bloodline to the desert bred Arabian. So they are very pure. We talk about Polish Arabians and French Arabians, most of them don't take uh, the bloodline back to Egypt or the Arabian Peninsula. So if you see his fourth or fifth grandfather, he uh, stops in the bloodline in Europe. The bloodline doesn't go back to Egypt or the Arabian Peninsula, which means it's not that pure compared to the Egyptian Arabian or the desert Red Arabian. That's why uh, when it comes to the bloodline, the best, uh, let's say, line is the Desert Bred Arabians in the Arabian Gulf countries right now, in the Arabian Peninsula, then the Egyptian Arabians, then the other kind of Arabians like Polish Arabians, French Arabians, and Spanish Arabians. That's my opinion about pure bloodlines, especially in Arabian horses. Oh, yeah.